Welcome to part one of this series of everything you need to know about the autofocus system on the Pentax K3 Mark III. Strap in, it's going to get crazy. Uh, these are all going to be extended videos because I want to show every single element of everything. Uh, this first, first part of the series will only be focusing on AFS. So I... Hmm... Let me try that again. Welcome to yet another video. This time is going to be a series. Everything you need to know about the Pentax K3 Mark III autofocus system. Everything. When I say everything, I mean everything. Every single option, how it works, what it does, examples, everything. So strap in, This is these are all going to be long videos in regards to this series because there's a lot of info to take in and there's only one way to do it right, which is to show everything, which just makes the video longer. But trust me, it will be absolutely worth it. So you just picked up a Pentax K3 Mark III or you've had the Pentax K3 Mark III for a while and you're going through autofocus things and you're just like, Wow, I don't even know where to begin with all these insane autofocus options. Like, what does type 1, 2, 3 mean? What do they do? This whole emphasized trackability standard, stability, subject recognition on and off, and just autofocus area restriction on and off, and all the various active areas, and what on earth i just this is way too confusing i just want to take the camera and shoot well this <clears throat> video series is going to all be about the autofocus settings on the pentax k3 mark III from start to finish so buckle up and let's get this ride going okay so to get started we're just going to take a look at afs and the settings for AFS. This will be the intro to the All About Autofocus video series provided by me for the Pentax K3 Mark III. And yes, I know that rhymed. I did not actually do that on purpose. But anyway, uh, so let's go into Autofocus with Viewfinder. And the very first selection is obviously your Autofocus mode. So it's in AFS, Single Autofocus, Autofocus Active Area, which is Full Auto. Uh, where you do not have any control as to where the camera is going to focus. Uh, when I say that, uh, it's actually kind of interesting because you also don't see the autofocus points in the viewfinder itself at all either. As you can see here, there's no autofocus points whatsoever. None. Zero. Zip. No autofocus points. So continuing on, uh, so from there, we have zone, which is the next one down. And with zone select autofocus, yes, you actually do get to see the autofocus points in the viewfinder, as you can see right in the center. So it's only going to utilize that small select area to acquire focus. Now you do not have any control over which one of these autofocus dots it's going to pick. That's the only thing. Uh, it only gives you an area of where the expected focus should be. So it's literally a zone of autofocus. And moving on, the next one is your usual select autofocus, which is fairly small. It's a fairly small uh, grid. It's in the center of the frame, so that where that circle reticle is. It's not super, super small, but it's not, I wouldn't really go as far as saying it's super large. And you can, it's gonna be difficult to show here, but you can move it around, All right? And then the next one is select S. Now the expanded ones, those only pertain to AFC. So as the camera is tracking, that allows the autofocus points to track across the entire scene. Uh, it does not apply to AFS because once 
the autofocus in AFS is locked on, that's it. It stays where it is. So it does not continuously take any data in regards to the movement of the subject. So that's why those are grayed out. Now, autofocus select uh, small looks like so. Just the square in the center. That's it. And again, you can move this one, you can move this one around as well. So that is small. So the next one is extra small. Now this one is a newer one. Uh, it's not the newest, but it is newer and extra small is very, very convenient for shooting subjects that are with a crowded foreground uh, that you, you know, for example, birds in a tree, you want to get through the branches. So this is an extra small focus point. And it really does make a big difference uh, in regards to making sure the camera does not get confused when you're shooting through, uh, you know, dense brush and things like that. And the next one is spot. Okay, now with spot focus, the thing is you cannot move spot focus around. Here I am, I'm moving the joystick back and forth and nothing is happening inside the viewfinder. It stays where it is. That's the only option there is. You cannot move it. It is just spot focused, dead center. That's it. So there are selections within AFS that you should be aware of that can affect whether or not your subject will be in focus depending on what you've chosen and how you've decided to set it up. Let, let's just look at the rest of the autofocus options because there's still a fair amount only for AFS. AFC is a whole different story. That's going to be a totally different video. So let's continue. All right. So for this, let's see, autofocus viewfinder. Let's just keep going down here. So autofocus area restriction that uh, there's two vertical lines at each end of the uh, field of view in the viewfinder. Uh, so autofocus area restriction off allows all the available autofocus points to be used. However, the lens I have on here actually is restricting <laughs> some of the uh, focus points. Uh, let me just go back to full auto here and you'll see what I mean. Let's go back to auto area. So you see there's only one vertical line on each side. There should be two for the full array of autofocus points. So let's go to turn the restriction on and I believe it'll take away those other two lines. Yeah. So it takes away those, uh, th those vertical lines. So this is a restricted autofocus area. This comes in handy when you're utilizing a lens where you may be having some issues in regards to corners uh you know picking things up in the corners you want it to be tailored down slightly or you're just having autofocus trouble because of the stretch of the image uh, for example if you're using a fisheye lens uh you know because of the way it distorts the image turning the restriction could be helpful just because with your eye you won't be tempted to utilize those extra uh wide autofocus points that are not working right and then you have your usual focus priority or release priority how do you want the camera to initiate the shutter and you've got your afc settings which i'm not going to get into right this second and you have your autofocus point for horizontal and vertical compensation so for horizontal you can move the focus point over so when the camera is in landscape orientation then uh, you could have it set to dead center but then if you are going to switch to vertical 
and you know it may be a bit off to the side this is especially handy with portraits right because uh, say you have your subject over towards the left for vertical shooting then you can set that let me just get that back here so you can have them both set individually and then when you rotate the camera there you go so now you can see that it moves as you tilt the camera trust me it was moving okay and then just press the joystick in to get it back to where you've initially set it I don't use this all that much so I'm going to change this back here just reset it all green button resets okay and green button resets good okay so moving on let's go back and then you have your autofocus when autofocus fails drive the lens or stop the lens this is important uh, with drive lens it's the usual you'll be able to hear it so when it has no focus it'll continuously attempt to focus and if we change that setting to stop lens then it should not do anything if it's out of focus so I'm pressing the shutter and nothing is happening nothing is happening at all so pressing the shutter nothing so let's go back to drive lens and once that's enabled press the shutter so there you go that is st stop and drive lens I recommend you leave it on drive lens but everyone everyone's got their own thing and the rest are AFC things except for the subject recognition so the subject recognition is only tied when you're using uh, <clears throat> the auto area and zone select um, now there's been some contention into this uh, so let's see you should also be using type 1 which uses both the autofocus and 307,000 pixel auto exposure sensor information to track with autofocus points the next option down uh, which does not provide for subject recognition to function uh, uses only the autofocus sensor information to track with autofocus points now this is all for AFC okay so we're gonna get more into that later on uh, and then this is focus sensitivity for AFC which I'm not gonna get into right now uh, but subject recognition on off so should detect eyes and things like that and we'll get into that later on and then you have your catch and focus on or off and that's pretty much it for the AFS settings now I'm just gonna be looking at like the viewfinder element live view is a totally different thing uh, so I'm gonna grab bodyless Bella and we will try out some subject recognition on and off and some of these uh, autofocus things and go from there okay so I have bodyless Bella set up here and I've got my k3 mark 3 I'm using the DAL 5200 WR uh, screw driven lens um, and we're going to start off with subject recognition turned off in AFS and see how it fares in regards to capturing the eyes. No, I did not poke my eyes. I'm good. I'm good. I promise. Uh, and then we're going to turn subject recognition on and see if it fares any better, at least getting close to the eyeballs. And, uh, all right, let's just see what happens.
Okay, so as you can see, I've got Bodyless Bella set up there and uh, got the K3 Mark III sitting here with the DAL50 200WR. And let's start firing off some shots. Let's get this set up here. Start firing off some shots with subject recognition off and see how it goes with that. Okay, there we go. Perfect. So, autofocus of the viewfinder, scroll down, subject recognition is off. So let's start at 50 millimeters because this does also make a difference. And just to show you in live view here, bodyless Bella is dead center of the frame. So the absolute most sensitive of the autofocus points. All right, let's uh, give it a go. So this is at 50 millimeters. And let's review. So here's all the autofocus points that it used. And when I zoom in, it will zoom in on the primary autofocus point. And that is where it picked autofocus, not anywhere near the eye. So you press the joystick in, goes to the center, scroll out. Scroll back in, that is where it picked. And that is the center, so not even close. All right, so let's see what happens if we zoom in here. So we're gonna go to 100 millimeters, take another shot, and this is in full auto. All right, let's see what happened there. It only picked one autofocus point, right at the nose, dead center of the nose. Okay. Now let's go to 135, see what happens here. And at 135, we've got a whole bunch of autofocus points. Zoom in, and it got the eyebrow just above the eye. Just above the eye. Let's try that one again, because you have no control over the autofocus point itself. And you'll see between these two shots, the autofocus points are different. So let's see what this picked up. Huh, same location. It picked the same location. All right, let's go all the way to 200. Fire it off again. And let's see, pick the lip. This time it picked the lip. How many autofocus points did it actually check? Okay, a lot. Let's try one more time. All right, let's review. Looks like it only picked lower halves. Pick the lip again. So let's turn subject recognition on and see what happens with that. All right, now let's go back to 50 millimeters. And I'm in aperture priority. And Totally different than the last time I did the 50 millimeter. Still looks like it's centering around the lip. All right, let's go to 100 millimeters. And let's see what it did here. Well, it picked a number of autofocus points in the middle. Yep, still looks like it is focusing primarily on the lips. Let's try one more time at 100. Yeah, it's only picking up the lower half. So this doesn't seem to really be working so well. At least not when you're using full auto autofocus. Let's go to 135. Let's see how that fared. A couple of autofocus points in the lower section. Let's try again. So again, 135. Time I picked the lower section, lower left. All right, let's go to 200. Number of autofocus points there. And again at the lips. Again at the lips. Yep, again at the lips. 
So just out of curiosity, even though this is not really what I was planning on doing for the video, but let's uh, do AFC very quickly and uh, see if that makes a difference. This will be interesting for the follow-up video where I focus on AFC, just so you have a better understanding of the subject recognition and how it all ties together. And uh, okay, so that was pretty much at the eyes. Now we're at 100 millimeters. One autofocus point down by the lips. Let's try one more time. Down by the lip. All right, 135. And it's down by the lip. Let's try one more time. That did not pick an autofocus point at all. So it's just going to focus at the center. Let's try one more time. Pick one autofocus point down by the lip. Let's go to 134 all the way to 200. And it picked an eye. Let's try one more time. And it picked a lower area. And eyebrow. And lower area. So it is a bit all over the map, at least with a small aperture lens. So that was subject recognition on. Uh, AFC did perform slightly better than AFS. Uh, if you are going to be utilizing AFS and you want to isolate the subject a bit to get more of a, uh, you know, closer to getting the eyes with subject recognition on, let's just make sure yeah, subject recognition is on. It is locked in the center. I'm in zone autofocus this time. Let's see what happens with AFS. And we've got the nose at, 50, at 200 millimeters. Let's go down to 135. Let's see what it picks. There we go. Let's see if we can repeat that. Yep, we pick the other eye. Okay, let's go to 100. And there's an eye. Let's see if we can repeat that again. There's an eye. And let's go down to 50. And 50 is where it falls apart because it's too wide. Okay, so there you go. Utilizing zone autofocus in AFS will allow for the eye detect autofocus to work as long as the subject is big enough within the viewfinder for the camera to pick out the details. I went back to 100 millimeters here. And let's see, okay, it's picking a lip. It's going to pick another lip. Let's go to 135. And now it's staying higher up around the eyes. So there you go. The subject needs to be large enough in the viewfinder, taking up most of the frame for the subject recognition to work in AFS and you need to narrow down what the camera is using to analyze the autofocus area uh, if you're using full auto. So full auto, you have no control zone, you don't have control, but you have movable control of the specific zone that you want the camera to zero in on. 
Uh, with full auto, you have absolutely no control. The camera's just gonna pick whatever it wants. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much AF-S. And this again was with a smaller aperture lens. So I'm gonna throw on the, uh, let's see, what should I throw on here? I'll throw on the DA Star 1650 f 2.8 PLM and see if this does a better job with detecting things uh, with a wider aperture. Okay, so I've got the 1650 f 2.8 PLM on here and I'm just gonna zoom all the way out to 50 millimeters. It's not going to be exactly the same because obviously, uh, you know, the 50 to 200 zooms a lot more, but this is close enough. And we already saw the results from 50 millimeters on uh, the DAL 5200. So let's see how this depicts things. Right around the eyes. Right around the eyes again. Let's see, we go super wide, at all the way at 16, so bodyless Bella will be tiny. And there you go. So the aperture of the lens does play a fairly big part in regards to how the subject recognition will work. Yeah, so that was interesting. <laughs> um, so yes, the lens does play a factor, a pretty large factor in regards to the subject recognition's capability of depicting things, because uh, it all comes down to the super fine resolution of the lens, as well as the aperture in regards to how much light is coming in. Uh, on top of that, uh, yeah, there are a lot of options, even for AFS on the Pentax K3 Mark III. And as I keep saying, it is a very specific camera, so you need to understand how all the different options affect things for you to be able to pick the right settings in order to capture the image that you're trying to capture. Uh, for example, full auto, you have no control. However, full auto allows for the subject recognition, but that's also lens dependent. And uh, you, know, you also have the option of the zone autofocus, which you can select and move around. Uh, but it keeps a small square pattern, so that whole square will move wherever you're changing it to. Uh, so you can tell the camera what zone you want it to focus in on, and then within that zone, it will automatically pick the subjects that it recognizes or the contrast or phase difference. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it for part one. Part two is going to be even longer because there's a lot more options for AFC, uh, and that is absolutely going to be crazy lens dependent in regards to the performance that you get out of AFC. But that's it for this one. Uh, I hope this helps at least a little bit more uh, with the understanding of how the focus system does work on the Pentax K3 Mark III. Uh, even if you're doing uh, you know, static subjects and you're using AFS but you want some subject recognition and you're finding it's not quite working the way you want it to, it most likely comes down to the lens, uh, which, I mean, I don't like saying that because that's sort of like, you know, I'm plugging for people to go spend exorbitant amounts of money on higher end lenses, but this really does truly make a difference. And that's going to be it for this one. If you like the video, leave a like. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. Always helps out. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Want to support the channel, that info is in the description. And that's it. I'm going to go. Hopefully you'll tune in and I'll see you on the next video. I'm out.